Hello, it's Charlotte here and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. I am coming at you today with a very fun, very long anticipated, I'm sure, uh, video all about Squarespace SEO. And I am going to be talking to you today about Squarespace SEO and blogging. So the topic of the video is going to be seven things that I do to every blog post to make it SEO friendly. And in just a minute, I'm going to be showing you my screen and demoing everything on the back end of my website so you can see how it works on a Squarespace site and you can follow along and take a look at some of the blog posts that maybe you've already written to make sure that you are in fact doing these seven things to make it SEO friendly, but also you can keep it in mind for any blog posts that you publish in the future because if you haven't done them, that's okay. You can always go back and update it, but also moving forward, now you know better and you'll be able to apply them and get all of the SEO benefits. So that's what we're we'll looking at today. And before we kick things off, I'm going to share my screen here. And I want to show you that I have a Squarespace SEO checklist that you can download. And this has been downloaded by thousands and thousands and thousands of people. So trust that you are in fantastic company. And basically it's a one page checklist that you can go through to make sure that you have everything taken care of on the Squarespace SEO front. So whether you're like just starting out with Squarespace SEO, you're a bit more of a beginner on this, or if you've been at it for perhaps a little while, you've taken a look at some of the other videos on my YouTube channel or something, this is a great way to make sure that you're really filling in all of the gaps and getting a full look at the Squarespace SEO that we have to do. So take a look at the SEO checklist. Again, I'll leave a link for it down below in the description and you can grab a copy of that. So now what we're gonna do is take a look at the blog posts and go through some of the things that make them SEO friendly. So again, I'm showing you on my website and my website right now is again, this might change in the future, but at the time of recording, this is on a 7.0 Squarespace website and it uses the Raleigh template. So your website, if it's on 7.1, um, it might look or feel like perhaps a little bit different, but all of the principles apply the same way. So again, if you're following on your website, it might look perhaps different, but also probably you'll still be fine. Okay. So let's go through the list and let's start off by opening up one of these blog posts here. Okay. And what we're going to do is go through the seven points. So the first thing, point number one that I do to make sure that the blog post is SEO friendly is that I give the blog post a very keyword rich and SEO friendly title. So the blog post title goes here in this field. And you can see as well, like this is the blog post on the front end of the website. This is what the title is. So if you look at it, you're like, wow, that's very clear. <laughs> Someone knows what the blog post is about. And it also contains some good like keywords so that again, when Google is crawling and indexing the content, they're like, wow, yep, I know exactly what the blog post is about. So that's the first thing that I want you to do. Think about the blog posts that you have, make sure that you're giving them a really clear title and that you're using this field correctly, explaining to Google what the blog post is about and ideally including any of the keywords that are important to, to your blog post. Okay? The second thing that we're gonna look at is the fact that you want to make sure that the blog post contains lots of headers. And here again, looking at the front end of the website, you can see that I have like, a header here or, you know, a header here as well. Lots more here. No, one, two, three, like all of these different headers that I have on there. And this is really helpful because again, not only will Google see the headers when they crawl and index the website. And so when they read the content in the headers, they're like, oh, it indicates maybe like importance or something. And so if you're including some of the keywords it you know, just helps strengthen that for you. But also it has the added benefit of if someone is just scanning the blog post, it's really easy them, for them to see the different sections in the post itself, right? So again, we're doing it mostly for you know, Google, but also too for the, the person who's reading the blog post. And when you're doing that on the back end, um, make sure that the section of text that you have, like let's say, I don't know, here or something, right? Like 
in this case, you can see that I've set it up as a header by using the different like header drop downs here. And so in most cases, I recommend that you fill out the headers within the blog post is either heading two or maybe heading three. And again, if you're on 7.1, perhaps this looks a little different, but the same principles apply there for you. So heading two and heading three, and that's what I would recommend doing for the headers. Okay. All right, the next thing that I wanna show you about is just generally speaking, the fact that I have long form content. So if you look at this blog post from top to bottom, let's go here, you can see just even how much scrolling there is. There's a lot of content on here, right? And like I'm formatting it in different ways. And if you read through the blog post itself, there's lots and lots of keywords related to the blog post topic that I'm doing. And I want you to think about this with your own blog posts that you have. So First of all, remember, Google loves long form content. That's what they decide is more valuable and therefore what they'll return to someone who's doing an online search. And so I want you to think about how long are your blog posts? Like, are they long enough? <laughs> Even just like looking at it as a basic scroll, are your blog posts long enough that Google would be like, oh, wow, yeah, this is actually valuable, right? Or are your blog posts just these like short little things that you have? Because again, when it comes to SEO, um, I really recommend the idea of quality over quantity. I think that is really, from what I've seen, how you're going to get much better chance of ranking your blog post and therefore driving more traffic and growing your like brand and business online. So again, long form content and naturally, probably that will include lots of keywords. So that's something you want to think about. Okay, that brings us to another point that you might want to look at as well, which is internal and external links. So you can see this, that internal and external links, I do this quite a lot in my blog post, even looking from the, the start of it. So you can see here in the very first like introduction, I guess, where I'm kind of like opening up the blog post or whatever, um, I link to some of my different like products or services, right? So, because again, remember, the reason why you're doing this is, of course, for user experience, you want to make sure that the person can easily access relevant content or any of the like offerings that you have. That's really important. But also too, remember that if you do a good job with your blog post, then a lot of these people will be coming to your blog for the very first time. And they haven't even had a chance to click through to any of the other spots on my website yet, right? And so that's why if I, in the blog post, I'm like, oh, click here for my like SEO consulting or click here for my program or like read these other blog posts. Again, remember they haven't had a chance yet to like even know that any of this is here. So if you're including these links already within the content, it could just be really helpful for the person. And again, when it comes to links on your website, it's a good idea to mix a combo of internal links, which again, internal links is something else within your own website. And then external links would be something where you're like linking away from your website. You're linking to another, another site there. So those are both really helpful. Okay, another thing that you might want to be doing is filling out the tags and categories on your blog post. So you can see here, for example, I've just like filled a few of them out. I've got categories and tags, and I think I have another blog post or video that talks about tags and categories. So I'll just leave a link to that up above and you can click over there to learn more in detail. But this is again, something I really want you to make sure that you're doing. And if you're Again, if your website is on 7.1, it might look a little bit different from this, but the same functionality is here. You want to use those tags and categories. And you can see that kind of play out here on the front end of my website. You can see right up at the top of the blog post, it says like, you know, there's these two sections, Squarespace and SEO. Well, if you see it, like if I'm hovering over it um, down here in like the bottom left, just look, just look down there. <laughs> Can you see that? You can see it's like blog slash category Squarespace or category SEO. So doing this is helpful, again, not only to get those keywords in there for Google when they're crawling and indexing it, but also from an organization point of view, it's very helpful to fill out the tags and categories for itself. Okay, I'm just looking at my list here to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. So I've talked about the title, the headers, the links, tags and categories. Um, the long form. Oh yeah. Two more things that I want to go over with you now. All right. The next one that I want to show you is how you might want to use, um, images in your blog post. So let's take a look at another blog that I know has some images. So let's get started to this old post that I have here. And 
you can see that in this blog post, I've got a combination of texts, I've got a video, and as well, I have some images in here. And so this is something I want you to think about too, because blog posts that have different types of content, whether again, it's text or video or images, all of that is going to help make the blog post post more SEO friendly. And if you're adding an image in here as well, and like in this case, it's just like a simple screenshot of, you know, related to the functionality that you're doing, but you want to make sure that this image is not only included in there, but that you like don't like, so see here, you can kind of see, I just wanted to show you in this case, like I've switched the name so that it just is like screenshot, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so in this case, if Google is crawling and indexing the image, that's not optimized, right? So instead you would want to go through and make sure that this blog post is, or sorry, this image within the blog post, even if it's just a simple screenshot, you want to make sure it's SEO friendly. And again, I think I have another video that I'll link to up above that talks a bit more about like naming the images and making sure that it's SEO friendly. But again, think about the text, the long form content, Maybe if you have like a video in it, that's always helpful. And then last but not least, the images. Okay. And then this brings us to our final point here, which again, I'm going to hop back on to the back end of my Squarespace website to show you. And this is that we are going to fill out the SEO description for the blog post. This is so important. And again, mine is on 7.0. So your editor, the blog post editor might look a little bit different, but you know, same, same, same but different. What you're going to do here is click over onto the SEO tab. And then down here, there's the SEO description field. So what I want you to make sure that you're doing for each blog post that you publish is you want to explain to Google what the blog post is about, right? So you can kind of see like Google or sorry, Squarespace explains a little bit to you what to put in, but I want to point out where it is and how you're going to do it. Again, I have another video and blog post that link that I'll link to up above here that goes into this in much more detail. So you can fill out, like you can learn what to fill out in the SEO descriptions, but it's something that you want to do. So to recap, we have seven different things that you want to fill out on every blog post to make it SEO friendly. And these things are, again, the title of the blog post, number one. Number two is that you're using lots of headers within the blog post. Number three is that you are doing long form keyword rich content. Number four is that you are doing links within the blog post, whether it's internal or external. Number five, you're filling out tags and categories for the blog post. Number six, <laughs> six is that you are adding um, multiple types of content, whether it's text, videos, or images. And then number seven, last but not least, is that you're filling out the SEO description for the blog post. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope that it showed you kind of a walkthrough of what to do and maybe acts as a little bit of a checklist. And don't forget, if you want a checklist, you can grab my Squarespace SEO checklist. I'll link to that down below and help yourself and thank me later <laughs> once you have it. And that is everything for, oh, there I am again. That is everything for today. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down below. Otherwise you can like, like this video or um, leave me a comment if this was helpful for you in any ways. And take a look at the other videos that I have here on my YouTube channel or on my blog. There's so much more content all about Squarespace SEO, growing your business, um, growing your brand, anything like that. So. Take a look and I will see you again soon in the next video. Bye.